Here we have a couple examples of ilmenite, which is our iron titanium oxide on our mineral list. Um, the first thing I think of when I see ilmenite is this distinctive black color. Unlike a lot of the other uh, minerals we've covered so far in the list, um, this one doesn't have any kind of color change. There's no um, readily oxidized color change or anything like that. No variation in tarnish. It's usually just this kind of black color here. Um, another thing to note is that it has a variable luster. So I've got one good cleavage plane crystal phase right here. And um, this has a pretty high reflectivity. So this would be something that we would say is submetallic. But then there are also these regions that don't have really nice crystal faces. They're a little bit more earthy, I would say. So this combination of um, submetallic and earthier luster are pretty indicative of something that you see in ilmenite. We go to the sample, we also see the same thing where there are these regions of higher shine and then also earthiness as well and this distinctive black color too. Um, ilmenite also does not readily form beautiful crystals or anything like that. If we think about galena where we had those nice um, sharp crystal faces and edges and cleavage, um, that is not a distinct property of ilmenite. Usually it forms in this kind of massive blocky kind of, we do have one good face here, but it's, it's atypical to find a really good ilmenite crystal. If it did form crystals, it is a hexagonal mineral, so it's likely that it would form maybe some trigonal looking shapes or um, hexagonal prisms maybe, but I would say that this massive blocky form is much more indicative of something like ilmenite. Because it is an iron titanium oxide as well, it does have um, a high density. So this is pretty dense. It's definitely not the most dense thing that we've seen so far, but it does have a high density. This could be a good way to distinguish it from something like um, maybe coal or something if you were out on a hike. It does kind of have that kind of earthy look to it of something organic, but actually it does have pretty high density, which is going to be diagnostic. It also has a black streak, in theory. Let's give it a good streak, see what we get. Yeah, I mean, pretty black, pretty dark. Um, so this is one of those times where actually the color of the oxide does match the streak that you see on the streak plate. So that could be a little bit diagnostic. However, the black streak is not necessarily diagnostic. Um, but the fact that it does come from a black mineral might be something useful to you on say like a mineral quiz or an exam. Um, it also, let's see, we did luster, the streak, hardness. Obviously it's soft enough to powder onto a streak plate, but it is one of the harder minerals that we'll see in the oxide group at like a 5.5 to a six. So let me get my nail here, see if we can give this thing a good scratch. Once again, too, this will depend on the purity of the sample. This likes to form with things like magnetite and other oxides. So it could be, you know, purity is going to be a big thing that controls hardness and these kinds of properties. Let's take a look. So it looks like I've made this mark right here. But I think the mark that I've just made might have just been the tip of this coming off. So really hard to distinguish the hardness of this um, individual sample because it's not super soft and it's not really hard. So I would say hardness is not necessarily a diagnostic property of the sample. Um, and as far as crystal habit goes, we talked about it forms in this massive, um, massive body shape. So instead of having nice crystal faces. Another common mineral you might get this confused with is graphite. And the way to tell those two apart is definitely going to be the streak, the density, as well as the hardness too. So that could be a common, um, if you're just using video materials, that could be a common um, mistake to make. So make sure you pay attention to those properties. So overall, pretty dense, always black, and has a mixture of these um, lusters. And I would say that's pretty typical of ilmenite. It is also weakly magnetic, 
And this usually comes from impurities where it commonly occurs with magnetite. So um, the samples aren't innately um, heterogeneously magnetic. So let's see if we can pick up a magnet with one of our samples. So it falls right off though, see? So I've got it, it kind of sticks, I can pick it up, but then I can shake it off. So it's not very magnetic, but that's a diagnostic property that if it were magnetite, it would stick a lot more readily, but it is weakly magnetic. So we know it's not something like hematite. And that's ilmenite, our iron titanium oxide.